are leading the FBI's investigation into Hillary Clinton's use of a personal email server and Russian interference in the 2016 election testified before Congress this week. Agent Peter Strzok, the personification of the righteous left, thinking they know better than the rest of us, was a composite of pompous, arrogant, indignant, sarcastic, smug, condescending, defiant, and unapologetic. Strzok seems to share Cardinal Comey's affectation about being a selfless servant of the people, even though he seems to simultaneously hold us all in contempt. Strzok is also the personification of the deep state itself, where fascism rules, where people in power don't care what you think, but instead decide they know better. They know what's right, and then they implement it. But no worries, Strzok isn't biased. He says so himself. After months of investigations, there's simply no evidence of bias in my professional actions. For me, it was one of the most stunning, don't believe your lying eyes moments I've ever seen. His own text exchanges betray his denial. He and his mistress, Lisa Page, called Donald Trump an effing idiot, loathsome, a bigot, an enormous D, blank, 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 awful, abysmal, a disaster. The irony here is that if you want to show bias, you would simply use his words. And for any of you who still don't believe your lying ears, take a listen to this. Ten days before the investigation began, which the department you work for says nothing was done before July 31st. You said Trump is a disaster. I have no idea how destabilizing his presidency would be. Between July 31st and August 8th, how many interviews did you conduct related to the alleged collusion between Russia and the Trump campaign? I'm asking for a number. I haven't gotten to the names. How many people? Had you investigated, had you interviewed the counsel of the FBI, based on the special counsel's equities, have directed me not to answer any <laughs> questions about the ongoing investigation into Russian attempts to interfere. So, so he's directed not to answer any questions by counsel for the FBI. So why is this important? Why would it be important to show the investigation began before the FBI said it did? Why? Because nothing happened to even begin an investigation. They made up a date and they made up a reason. The Democrats in Congress knew the danger zone they were in and desperately tried to use every excuse to end the questions. And so pandemonium broke out in the House of Representatives. He has said that he's been instructed by the FBI not to answer the question. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Your Chairman, Mr. Chairman, is it not appropriate to also interject the attorney-client privilege, which cannot be overridden uh, and is a the, rule of the House to the, the extent that witnesses have suspend. the right to an attorney-client privilege in this House? Mr. And that is what this witness is uh, asserting Mr. attorney Strzok, client privilege, Mr. and he has been Strzok, advised not Mr. to answer the, the gentlewoman question. will suspend. And it went downhill from there. Mr. And Chairman, you, please. Yes, have have you Mr. Chairman, this is an intolerable Mr. harassment Mr. of the witness. What is wrong with that? You need your medication. The free for all in that hearing room was a sight to behold. But more than that, it was a microcosm of what the left has done when they want to shut down the right. The pent-up rage and the pandemonium was an example of how angry the left is. And while the Republicans conducted themselves in a genteel manner, the Democrats, claiming parliamentary points of order, blew their collective gasket. So struck arrogantly claims he's following FBI protocol. They told him not to say anything. But six hours later, he's shown yet again to be a liar and is allowed to answer the question that goes to the heart of the basis for this absurd investigation into Donald Trump's alleged connection with Russia. 
And when given the green light, here's Strzok's answer. Agent Strzok, between July 31st, 2016 and August 6, 2016, how many witness interviews did you conduct as part of the Russia Trump campaign alleged collusion investigation? I don't recall, and I'd have to check the case file. We waited all that time for that answer? Yes, sir. That's eerily similar to what you said a couple hours ago. And if that isn't enough, the text, quote, I want to believe the path you threw out for consideration in Andy's office, that there's no way he gets elected, but I'm afraid we can't take that risk. It's like an insurance policy in the unlikely event you die before you're 40. So Strzok wasn't trying to prevent Trump from winning. What he was doing was even worse. He was talking about having a plan to effectively disenfranchise the voters who elected Trump should Trump win. Forget democracy, forget the people. Those voters whom Strzok doesn't like are idiots. He said so himself in a text to his mistress. If his candidate of choice didn't win, the one he helped avoid criminal liability, he was going to abuse the power we entrusted him to ensure that it didn't matter. If the unthinkable were to happen, his insurance policy would help deal with it. The insurance policy, my friends, is the Russia collusion investigation. And that's why I wrote the book, Liars, Leakers, and Liberals, detailing the power structure, trying to bring the president down. The book hits store shelves on Tuesday, but you can still pre-order it right now on Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. And don't forget to tell me what you think on my Facebook page and what you think in the open. Now, uh, coming up, my next guest had one of the most memorable moments at the explosive Peter Strzok hearing. Take a listen to this. I'm going to just go to go to a date and then ask you to read your own words. Hi, how was Trump other than the <laughs> Trump is a disaster. I have no idea how destabilizing his presidency would be. Ms. Page said... Not ever going to become president, right? Right? Uh, no, no, he's not. We'll stop it. What the F happened to our country, Lise? Okay, read it again that way. I, sir, did you not? Was no, it not I just intelligible? Hear it you one just more want time. to hear it for yeah. me to repeat it. Please. Okay, sir. Sure. I, happy to indulge you. Uh, I can't pull away. What the F happened to our country, Lise? Wow. Congressman Darrell Issa joins me now. Good evening, Congressman. I must tell you, uh, as a trial attorney myself, I was quite impressed when you make the accused read his own words. Most of them in my lifetime in a criminal courtroom denied they were their words, but clearly they were his. So uh, kudos to you. If, Thank Congressman, you. if we didn't have those texts from Peter Strzok, where would we be right now? Well, we probably have less evidence that, in fact, the very underpinning two years ago uh, that has led to literally two years of this talk about collusion with the Russians wouldn't have happened. From the very beginning, Strzok has been in a perfect position not only to make sure that Hillary Clinton got the whitewash of her own actions, which we know uh, were wrong on, on their face, but now... Two years later, we're still talking about collusion when, in fact, what we know is the Russians are still the evil empire, but, in fact, we have not one single indictment, accusation, or piece of evidence that shows that Donald Trump, President Trump, or anyone directly connected to his campaign colluded with the Russians. And it's been a long time, but it started right there with Peter Strzok, who hated the president, loathed him, and used words, and I chose only the nice ones by comparison. There are some doozies in there that we couldn't, write, we couldn't have aired. Right, right. But you know, Congressman, I mean, it was those text messages that really gives us an insight into the esteemed Federal Bureau of Investigation and, and the, the 
the fact that, you know, they were capable uh, and are capable, uh, certainly under that administration, of uh, being political. But, you know, the, their insurance policy that Strzok was talking about, and that's the Russia collusion investigation, it is paying off, Absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. It has slowed down a great many things the president would do. And it's given the Democrats this all holier than thou Senate attitude that not confirming his candidates. And we're not just talking about the court. We're talking about simple career people that need to go in and, and help with the bureaucracy. Uh, not hundreds, but thousands are backed up there waiting. Even ambassadors, the usually a fairly quick process, have waited a year or more. Uh, some have gone away. Uh, yeah. This is the kind of obstruction that they justify because they justify an investigation that has no fundamental underpinnings other than the truth we both understand, which is Putin and the Russians continue to be evil and they continue not to have our best interest. But that's been a reality of life. Uh, quite frankly, since before Eisenhower. Well, there's no question. But, you know, I, I often wonder, you know, if if it weren't for Strzok starting this investigation, refusing to answer when it really started, I mean, other than the FBI saying, oh, it started on July 31st, and then when he got approval, at which he always had, they never told him he couldn't say that, he says, I really don't remember, you know, which is what, you know, the, the, the defendants, defendants tell their witnesses, you know, if they don't want to incriminate themselves. Themselves. Uh, if it weren't for him, there wouldn't be a special prosecutor. But I, I want you to hear one of Strzok's texts, and, and it was in the inspector general's report. He says, um, on the day after Mueller is appointed, he says, uh, for me, in wondering whether he should join Mueller's investigation, I personally have a sense of unfinished business. I unleashed it with mid-year exam, their term for the investigation. Uh, now I need to fix it and finish it. Who gives a blank? One more AD, uh, that, that means assistant director, which is what he was, an investigation leading to impeachment. So the day after Mueller is appointed, he's, you know, wondering, should he join the team and can it lead to impeachment? He's the first, one of the first people to mention the word impeachment. And the investigation started with him. And he still won't give us honest answers. And because we've got Rod Rosenstein in the attorney general seat, will we ever get justice? You know, I'm afraid we won't. The only justice we're going to get is from the American people who, hearing Peter Strzok's words, in some cases spoken by him, are discounting this investigation to nil. They're discounting the Democrats' objections and their continued claim that there's collusion when, in fact, there's no evidence of collusion. Uh, you know, and, and, Judge, one thing I think that we always discount a little bit is we think these hearings don't matter, but they do inform the public in a way in which the public is better prepared to react to other fake and false things that are said. Uh, you know, it's just the fact that uh, Steve Cohen uh, had to apologize when he tried to imply that a Purple Heart was equal to this man being asked to tell us about his misuse of government property and these foul statements he made about the president. Well, and, and certainly we're going to get into that later in the show. But I, I really think that uh, Strzok was uh, a, a quite, uh, it, it was quite interesting watching how he handled the congressmen and uh, congresswomen and the way he views himself uh, as against Congress. He was somewhat pompous. He was. He was. But remember, this is one of the problems at the FBI. If 90 percent of the agents are dedicated professionals who really try to do the right thing all the time, and there's 5 percent or 10 percent that aren't, they can change the outcome of investigations time and time again. And Peter Strzok is an example of a bad apple that the FBI doesn't seem to have the ability to get rid of in a timely fashion. She's still working for the FBI. Congressman Daryl Issa, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Thank you, Judge.